but I'll talk about the colors and everything as I paint. So to start off, I want to get a just sort of a base color on there. So I'm going to mix up some, just going to mix up a little bit of that ultramarine blue and some brown oxide for um, kind of gray off, gray around the background a little. So just kind of get this ultramarine blue and some transparent brown oxide. And I use um, I use a little bit of turf when I do that, but other than that, I, I'm not using any mediums. So, yeah, this is sort of a quick way to get rid of that white background there. Well, welcome, Shelly. I can kind of read your some of your... Um, you know um, what you're saying here while I'm painting because I can see it on the screen and when you go to watch the um, replay don't worry all those comments and everything they don't show up so I know sometimes it can be a little annoying but hi Catherine <laughs> so um, now I've got this bright blue poppy so I want to clean kind of the area I'm going to pay, focus in on this one for the live stream because it's quite a complicated there's a lot going on in that little um, photo so I just I'm going to focus in on this big one for the live stream and then I will work on the rest of it and add it to the video later and upload it to my patreon channel and so I'll save that one for later, that little one there. But I'm going to work on that big one so you get the idea of how to go about painting it. So you can see I'm wiping off where I'm going to put that blue because I want it to really kind of show up really nice. So I'm just kind of using my paper towel, lifting off some of that color there. And just also kind of drawing when I do that. And I put out a different color of blue. I have my ultramarine blue and I've got some cobalt blue, but I'm going to try using a bit of this to get a really kind of glowy blue. I'm going to put some of this um, manganese, I think it's manganese blue or cerulean blue, one of those different blues I never really use and I'm going to put a bit of that in there just just as like a it'll show up kind of later when I add all the because it's more of a baby blue but I want some of these different blues to show up so what I'm going to do is put some of that down and then I'm going to wipe it away and when I wipe it away I'm also thinking about already some of the the way those marks go, those little lines that you make can be kind of part of the flower, you see. So you think about brush strokes already, even though it looks like I'm not really doing much here. So now I've got that kind of underpaint there. I might even do a little, I'll do a little bit of that down here for this flower that I'll do later. I'll put a bit of that in. I'm leaving where that real bright highlight is for my, just to gauge my drawing there. So we're getting some of that nice, pr that pretty blue color going there already. And Now I'm going to, I'm going to get in already, I'm going to use some different colors um, in the background that are a little darker so that later um, these light blues will show up more. So I'm kind of 
having fun with this. I'm going to mix a little, I've got a little bit of uh, magenta on my palette and some ultramarine blue. And I kind of see some purples and stuff in the background. So I'm just going to go and shape out some of that, some of those um, darker colors and kind of shapes that are in the background there. Might have a little too much turp in my paint. That's why it's dripping. Um, just kind of put in some of those different purples. Magenta. And also you can sort of see the drawing coming through. I'm still paying attention to the overall like shape and how far does this leaf come past this I'm looking at that so it comes a lot further and I'm looking at all those things even though I'm it looks kind of random and chaotic I'm still kind of paying attention there and just sort of gonna do this just so I have a contrast as well to the flower because it's such a pale flower And sometimes I'll get a little, get a little sap green here and there. And just put in, put in some of these colors in the beginning that look, it looks a little crazy, but you know, at the end you'll, you'll be glad you did it because you'll have different, a lot of different stuff going on. Makes it more interesting. Okay, so now I'm kind of coming up against the bottom of my bo board here. So I'm going to just lift this off because I can't really wipe away. And now I'm gonna combine all those little marks. So that it's sort of like, um, Almost looks like a watercolor at this point. Okay, so now there's, now I have some contrast for my blue flower to work with. And I can go in and use a bit more now when I put in a, a light blue mark, it's going to show up more there. So I can put in uh, a few details, not much, but I'm gonna, I'll am gonna i put in maybe where the center is in the stem. So the center, the main, the main center there. And it doesn't, I'm using a bit of green and some of that magenta was on my brush so I'm putting that in and then you can see how it comes down into the stem so I you want to make sure at least that lines up a bit better I had mine over to the left uh, to the right a little so I'm going to move that over so now you've got a few things that you've got the center you've got the main stem there and put in the stem for this one. It's a little hard because of the, when I do the live stream, it's kind of, I'm setting it up so you can see it, but it's a little tough to paint sometimes. <laughs> so I'm gonna just put in, just, I'm just paying attention to things as I go here and I know that the photo is just there to kind of help me. Um, it's not, ha I'm not painting it exactly like the photo. So just give me a reference for the flower and then. Okay, so now that I've gotten that there, I'm gonna look at the sort of what's going on in the center, there's um, 
I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. And some of the different shades of blue that we can put in. So I'm going to get, um, I think I'll use a little bit of that cobalt blue and just try that out. See how, because I need to get some of that dark blue coming into the center there. And I, I want to work on that first, I think, before I get too into the details here. So I'm looking at some some of those those different petal shapes that are there. But I don't I don't want to overly get into the detail because it is such a loose flower. It's not super it's not super um like an orchid where you have to get the right geometric shape right away. So Might take a bit of that blue and now sort of drag up some of those those marks that you see in the reference photo where there's some of the different veins with different, um, you know, showing the shape of the the petal. So I'm just going to put in a few of those strokes there on top of my light blue so now you can see some of that texture coming through there and from the center I'm pulling out like that and I'm leaving that light blue to show through there And then I'll go back with my paper towel and kind of reshape some of that lighter edge. I want to get that real glowy blue coming through there. And I think the best way to get that, it's like when I do pink, I have to to wipe away the underpaint to get that to show up. So I don't have any anything on my paper towel right now. This is just a dry paper towel. So now you see there's you're starting to see some more of that kind of poppy shape there and texture. Um, so we can kind of look at this uh, little thing in the middle and work up, put a little detail on there. So I'm going to get a little viridian and some cad yellow light and I'll put a little, I see a little bit of that bright green there. Just sort of now you can sort of see there's some shape there and then there's a little kind of like an X where that little stem comes out there. And then I can take some of that transparent brown oxide or if you have burnt sienna, sometimes people don't have brown oxide, I can put a little dab, a few dabs of that around to start for those little, little starburst of detail there that comes from the center. And I start dark that way when I go to put the little kind of light orange highlights on there, they'll show up. I'm going to leave that for a bit and go back to the flower, the main structure of the flower. So I'm going to go back to get some of that blue and the white and also a co little cobalt blue, a little white and kind of add some thicker paint 
to these flowers now that I've kind of got the shape and everything. And again, I'm paying attention to the the brush stroke coming down into the flower. I'm not painting it that way. Kind of going with the the natural flow of this flower here. Put some up here. I mean, you can do that brush stroke like that, and it's you know kind of what a lot of modern painters do. But you can then just correct it, add some of those pull the stroke in and then it kind of goes back to looking like it's part of the flower so you can do that but just make sure you can pull it back in so you don't have all these different kind of planes going and then I'm gonna go and put this there's this lip here of this one curling so I'm gonna I get that in there. Adds a little bit of drama to the flower. And again, kind of show those brush strokes are coming up and from the bottom up here. And sometimes if I tell my beginner students, if you're having a trouble with something that's a little bit a little more complex like that just make it a flat petal like if that curl is is driving you too crazy um just make it look like kind of like something you know just don't don't bother with the lip just sort of paint a another normal petal cuz you don't want to you don't want to it, you want to make it, it should be fun. It shouldn't be, you know, creating a bunch of stress trying to paint it. You can always learn another time the proper exact way. But you want to have, you want to enjoy what you're doing. And sometimes people get discouraged because they want to be, they want it to be perfect every time. But... That's not always going to happen. And so this one also has a little lip. So I can just get some lighter, whiter paint and just sort of show that, you know, that it's curling over. I didn't even notice it in the beginning. <laughs> so I can go and show the lip by getting a little get a little bit of a darker paint and sort of pull that underneath and now you can see there's a there's a top side and a bottom side there see you can create the lip that way as well And then go back and really put in some of those ruffles that you see there. You know, you kind of start tight, but then you can loosen it up a little as you go. So add a little lighter blue paint on the edge there and kind of add some of those poppy ruffles to it. like that and I gotta work on that one now and I use mainly the Windsor Newton paints and um, I post the full length lessons on my patreon channel so if you're watching and you kind of like the style my lessons are a lot more uh, I'd say slower and more detailed than my when I do the live stream because I, I have more time to kind of set up properly and use my proper camera and everything. And um, you can paint 
a lot of different things. Birds and flowers, landscapes. So, and that's it on my Patreon channel. And that's, I think there's a link on my, in my profile for that. So now I, you just kind of keep looking at your reference photo and looking at, you know, where there's some light coming in and putting in a little detail here and there. At this point, you know, again, you sometimes less is more with flowers like this, like roses and things where there's lots of different uh, values and you can start to lose the, the more I fuss with this thing, the more I can start to lose some of the nice loose underpaint that I had. So I have to kind of add some back in like that. So sometimes just you don't want to overdo it. So that's why you kind of think ahead in the beginning when you think what's a good color for like a mid-tone or and then get that down and then you're almost halfway through the the worst of it because you've got like a good base to start with but then I, I sometimes go overboard trying to get too detailed so I'll, st I'll stop with that for a bit and then I'm gonna go back to the I'll go back to the details a little of the center before I go and paint too much on that. I'll put a little more dark blue here and there. Okay, so now we've got the little dots. I'm gonna go get some orange, maybe some yellow ochre you could use like you know something to make that rusty orange that's bright enough so you could take orange and mix some brown oxide or some raw sienna or something like that in there and now you can dab some of that even you can use a few plain orange dots just to really and I'm doing this kind of quick but you could take your time and so you don't get so much paint. Like some of them are a little big and if you do that, just use your palette knife and lift the paint off a bit and, you know, try it again. And I'll go back in and put in a little, a little bit of a bright green, a little bit more bright green in there. And now I'm going to look at going to um, really kind of popping the background out a little more so that the flower comes out a bit, a little bit more. So I'll go back and get some of that same color, the magenta and the, um, I was using some magenta and some of that ultramarine blue and I added a little white to it and I'll just sort of kind of bring in some different colors in the background there to sort of get it to stand out more and I'll get some different greens and so it's sort of the next layer is going to be a little thicker than I originally did. And there was, um, in the reference, there's some little orange poppies. You can leave those for now, and then later you can decide, oh, maybe I do want some little flicks of color, but careful in the beginning not to over go overboard because then it's a little, little harder to decide um, when you get you start getting too many colors going it it just loses the it just sort of gets a little bit 
too rainbowish. So you gotta kind of decide how much color you wanna put. And sometimes you do want almost every color in there just for fun, but just gonna kind of show you how I would, you know, add some different different things to this. And I would go back and then really darken the the stem, for example, and I would put in, maybe put in some of that, those other buds, if it look, if it makes sense, they might be too, there might not be enough space in such a little canvas, but you could sort of draw in some of those darker objects in there. It just helps anything darker around is going to help the blue to stand out. So I might just go and put some of that sap green in there, here and there, just to see how it brings out that side there. The more you, the more you kind of do that, it just, it sort of makes the flower come forward. So I'm just putting some darker greens. Then I'll go back to, you know, I could go back to some cobalt blue and magenta, just add a few darker purples in there. And then once you uh, do get through adding some of these marks, you can also, again, I kind of will go and loosen them up a little. So now you've, you kind of, it looks like there's a lot going on in your background without <clears throat> over killing it on like exact petals or leaves. You can just have these sort of green shapes, you know, when you do a flower like this. So it doesn't really take away from the flower. Um, but you've got now all kinds of different colors and stuff in there. So it's not just too boring. And I'm just adding a little more highlight to that flower there and looking at the shape a little more. And I soften some edges off here and there. And I look at little details like maybe there's more shadow coming from behind the bottom there. And um, down there, a little more detail. So the rest would be the similar. I would add the next flower, and then I would add, you know, more of this background. And then you might say, well, maybe I do want a little orangey blue or orangey flowers next to the blue. So you could put a few little bits of orange there, kind of you know, brings it up a little bit, but you kind of, you, you go with your gut and you sort of want to see if that makes sense once you get there. So again, I'll put some marks like that in there and then soften them a bit so that they look like they're in the background. So yeah, I would do the same for this flower. I think that's about about it. You know, I would probably wouldn't do too much more to it. And um, yeah, so that is our our little demo for the day of the Himalayan blue poppy. And it'll be available to watch. You can watch it, I think, if you go onto my um, Instagram and look for the little play button, I think that's located at the top of like all my where it shows all the photos on the grid. Um, and then you can replay it there. And then I'll also, um, 
you know, I'll finish it off and post it for my Patreon members later, the rest of this video. And you can join for as little as $10 a month and do all the tutorials and quite a few lessons. And then it's 29 for all the main lessons. Well, thanks for watching and have a really good weekend.